the grace, the mercy, and the peace of God, our Heavenly Father, our faithful Heavenly Father, be and abide with each one of you. Amen. The words that I would like to focus on today are the words of that lamentation section of Scripture, our first reading, especially again reaffirming these words that we've sung twice today. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Gracious God and Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. You give to us all that we need day by day. And you also give to us through our Lord Jesus Christ the special assurance that every morning is a new start, a second chance, because your mercies come fresh and new as the morning sun. Lord Jesus, bless us now, letting your spirit work within our hearts and guiding the words that I proclaim this day. In the name of Jesus, amen. You know, there's a lot of bad news in the world. I need not tell you that. We have been living with that for a long time and especially over the past few days as well. We can go to Syria, we can go to Iraq, and we we see the fighting that continues on and on and on. We see ISIS and Boko Haram continually doing their damage in the Middle East and in Africa, especially targeting Christians. And we also see, even in North Korea, the son of an irrational leader who himself has inherited everything that his father was as he plays around with threats of nuclear war. We see China hacking into our systems of government, getting all the information about all the the government people and agencies that they want We see a young racist killing nine innocent congregational members at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. And then we hear of elderly people being uh, hospitalized, even dying from the, the heat exhaustion because they have no air conditioning. We hear of child abuse. We hear of babies continually being aborted. From the last time the Supreme Court decided to determine morality for us. And now we see this latest thing with the, as they continue to change the morality of the nation and of nature itself. And then we see a group of Christians, both young and older, witnessing of their faith in Guatemala. We see babies born healthy and strong and being brought to the waters of holy baptism. We even see the sun rising each morning and we go out and we hear the birds singing. We know that our reservoirs and our ponds are full to overflowing after praying for so many years and God has given that much needed water and our flowers are blooming even as the newscasts go on with all the bad news God is reminding us of the good news that he is the one who provides and he is the one who is still in charge in spite of the world's turmoil. His compassions and his steadfast love never fail. Great is his faithfulness. You know, the inspired writer of today's Old Testament lesson, the prophet Jeremiah, sometimes called the complainer or the weeping prophet because he had been rejected by his own people all because he preached God's word in its truth and they would not hear it. God reaffirmed to him time and time again of his steadfast love. And after King Nebuchadnezzar's triumph over Judah, Jeremiah could have said, I told you so, I told you so. But as God's man on the spot, he gave them a word of promise and hope. He reaffirmed what the Hebrew says is chasat, which is the steadfast love of God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. That Hebrew word chasat. It's a, kind of pronounced with a, a spit. You know, if you guys, you have to kind of get... get Uni can do it. She's German enough. She can, she can go down into the throat. 
And that H is really a kind of a CH and a hard C. Refers to God's great love, embodying unfailing compassion, steadfast mercy, and his grace-filled faithfulness. It is so needed by us today because the world afflicts us. The world works to consume us, as the NIV even uses that word. It consumes us with our own self-indulgence, and it saps our emotional energies. Materialism erodes away our spiritual and our physical strength as we try to accumulate and become focused upon things that can rust, that moths can eat, and that fire can burn up. The world fails us. It gives us a myriad of great promises. The widow in the gospel reading with that ongoing hemorrhaging for 12 years lived with a lot of promises given to her by doctors, but every time they talked about a cure, there was a price tag until it drained her of all of her finances, and the result was nothing. She had nothing left. All of the great promises were as much as air-filled balloons that would deflate in time or simply burst. The world readily discards us as well. It cast us off without a second thought. I remember in, when I was in Wisconsin and one man worked extra hard as they were moving another section of his plant over to another building. And he'd worked on Saturdays and he'd work on Sundays and he finally went up to his, his manager and he said, you know, I really think that I would, I think I've, I've done so much I would like to ask for a raise. And the man said, you're fired. He said, we're in the business of using up human resources and then discarding them. That's the world's motto, using up human resources. That's you and me. That's human beings. And then discarding them because there's more. It cast off people as though they were just unwanted garbage. The world is marked with affliction and grief as well. The experience of pain in life and in relationships is seen in our gospel reading as well with Jairus, that leader who knew the pain of loss. He saw his little girl sick and then she died. And how we experience sadness and loss, disillusionment and despair in life as well. When life and people turn their backs on us, it's easy to feel as though God himself is turning his back on us too. That sick widow must have felt helpless as though God did not care for her because no one seemed to care for her. Jairus must have felt hopeless with no place to turn for rescuing his daughter. Nothing was working. However, they turned in a last-ditch effort to the one who embodied God's chassad. They turned to Jesus and were blessed beyond their expectations. The Lord indeed blesses us. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. The steadfast love of our Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. God's chassad fills us. His great love comes freely to us in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. His grace energizes us to serve and live out our salvation with joy. Paul noted that when he wrote to the Corinthians. In their affliction, they did not turn inward to look at what they were suffering, but instead they looked outward to see other people suffering in the great famine, and they gave not only what was appropriate, but they gave beyond what was even expected. And Paul says, why? Because they first gave themselves to the Lord. And once they gave themselves to the Lord, they realized that he was the possessor of all that they had, and it was very easy to give it up, to give it out. God's chassad never fails. God is faithful because faithfulness is a very part of his nature. God can be trusted in all things, unlike the world. And God's chassad comes fresh to us every morning. Through his steadfast love, his chassad, we are claimed by God. 
God calls us his children through the waters of holy baptism. We are called his, his lambs and his sheep. He never rejects us. He will never neglect us or forget us. And Jesus even says nothing will be able to pluck you out of the Father's hand. In God's sod is found blessing. In his steadfast love, we find joy and strength even in the midst of affliction and sorrow. In his unfailing compassion, we find peace and hope even in grief. Claiming the blessings of God's chassad is what we are asked to do and we're invited to do. Let him sit alone in silence. Isn't that amazing? We claim the blessings through solitude of all things. When is the last time that you dealt with silence? We don't have that around us very much anymore. Sitting alone in silence. There's even commercials going on, go dark for dinner. What does it mean? Turn off the cell phones, the iPads, and the television, and the radio, and talk to each other. Talk to each other, eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose. And that's what Jeremiah is telling us. Let him sit alone in silence, meditating on the steadfast love and compassion of God, not remembering just what you have lost, but what he has given and continues to give. We claim the blessings through repentance as we acknowledge our sin and confess our sins, or as he says, bury our face in the dust. And we look up to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, which brings to us grace and forgiveness. We receive anew his covering of forgiving blood, redeeming blood, which washes us of all of our sins. We repent of our sins and we seek the Spirit's strength to change. We claim the blessings through humility. The widow acknowledged that, that she had no other in which to trust. Jairus acknowledged that, that he had no one else in which to trust. And they were blessed. They were blessed because they trusted in the one who had the power to heal and to even bring life. We claim the blessing as we put our hope in Christ Jesus. And we claim the blessing as we trust God's chassad as we trust the steadfastness of God's love for us, and we are blessed. Every day, my friends, is a new start, a second chance for us, trusting his steadfast love both for the, gives us both peace in our heart, joy to our soul, and renewed purpose for our life. Tomorrow morning, even this afternoon, I want you to do something. I want you to begin the day in this way. I want you to say, great is your faithfulness. Your compassions are new and fresh. Your mercies come new and fresh to me every morning, Lord. And I want to walk in that joy. And you will walk in that joy. Remembering, no matter how bad today may go, tomorrow is a new start a second chance because of God's mercies and his compassion. He will bless you and fill you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may that peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.